Welcome back to this already, the final segment of The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt, he's our guest here for this final segment, and he's got an interesting story for us. But before we get to it, I'd like to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, Gordon, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're doing these days. Thank you, sir. I'm a former Navy chaplain. Uh, I was honorably discharged in 2006 after some controversy. The Secretary of the Navy said it's not okay to pray in Jesus' name in public. You have to pray non-sectarian prayers if you're outside of Sunday Chapel. So I violated that policy. I took a stand for religious freedom. I prayed in Jesus' name on national television in front of the White House. And for that, I was punished at a misdemeanor court-martial. But then I was vindicated by the United States Congress. Congress rebuked the Navy and changed the law after 300,000 Americans signed a petition for free speech for military chaplains. So we, even though I lost my battle, I lost a 16-year career, a million-dollar pension, uh, we won the war, and we changed national policy and restored free speech for chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Incredible. Great story. And uh, I, I think that's a great thing to be known for. Congratulations. And what a cool, cool thing for us to be mindful of, that the war for religious liberty is greater now than it has been uh, really in the history of our country. Yes, it really has. In fact, for the five years now that I've been out of the Navy, I've led the Pray in Jesus' Name project, and together we've delivered 4.5 million fax petitions to Congress, defending pro-life, pro-marriage, pro-Jesus, and pro-Israel issues. And people can send our petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. That's our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And we are concerned now that uh, the Congress is introducing a bill. In fact, uh, a homosexual congressman from Colorado, Jared Polis, introduced a bill to promote atheist chaplains in the military and replace some of the Christian chaplains with atheist chaplains. And doesn't that seem like an oxymoron to you? It does seem like an oxymoron. It's going to be interesting to see how they uh, help them through their spiritual life uh, without any spirit to draw on. <laughs> yeah, that seems strange. Well, that's, you're right. That's the irony. And it, it's really, I think, an insult to people of faith who serve in our military. Uh, if an atheist wants secular counseling, they can already go to a psychologist. That's right. They don't have to go to a chaplain. But when somebody you know, has a spiritual need or a religious need or a need to worship, they should have a chaplain there to facilitate that. Uh, instead, now they're going to have, uh, well, thank God this bill was not passed, but if the Democrats got their way, 150 Democrat congressmen voted for this, by the way. Uh, thank God that 44 Democrats voted against it, and all the Republicans voted against it, so the bill failed. But if there were atheist chaplains, what would they do? They're not going to lead worship services. They're not going to provide spiritual comfort or spiritual counseling. Uh, they're also fundamentally not qualified to become chaplains because you have to have a three-year master's degree studying your religion. Well, what would an atheist seminary teach? On the first day, they would take, you know, everyone would show up for class and say, we don't believe in anything. And then on the second day, what would you teach? Well, how would you get a three-year degree in that? It's never going to happen. So atheists will never have the same qualifications as Christian chaplains uh, because they're not certified by the Pentagon and uh, they're simply not qualified for religious ministry. By the way, uh, what is your website? Is it uh, is it uh, PrayInJesusName.org? Yes, that's my website, and uh, we have a daily half-hour TV show there. We uh, report on church and state issues uh, in a news broadcast. We also have a free email alert that people can get. Uh, and we have opportunities for people to, to make your voice heard in Washington, D.C. We send, you know, millions of fax petitions to Congress. It's better than a postage stamp because that takes three months to get through the anthrax scanner, but faxes are instant. They're better than a phone call, which is just a check mark on a tally sheet, uh, and better than an email, which gets buried in their spam box. Uh, but you'll get you know, oftentimes a letter back from your congressman if you sign a petition with us at PrayInJesusName.org. Okay, if people need to check that out. So that bill died, and it died, I'm, I'm sure. Did it pass the Senate, or did it start in the House? No, uh, well, it started in the House, and that particular one did not succeed, so it didn't even make it into the House version. But there's good news. There's an amendment in the House version National Defense Authorization Act of 2014, and it's Section 530, which actually protects freedom of speech 
not just for chaplains, but for all of our troops who are now sometimes being censored or punished. There's a chaplain in Alaska this week who was just censored by his commanding officer because he wrote on a blog, there are no atheists in foxholes. And of course, he was quoting President Eisenhower, who said that in 1954. But just for writing the, about the idea that some people get, you know, foxhole religion or they come to God because they want to be right before they go to war. Uh, the, the chaplain was censored by his commanding officer and had to take down the blog. Uh, there is no freedom of speech for military chaplains. If I can be punished for praying in Jesus' name, if uh, this chaplain in Alaska can be censored, there's also a technical sergeant in Utah who just got a letter of reprimand because he wrote an email to a chaplain. Uh, his email to the chaplain said, hey, I don't like the fact that there was a homosexual wedding in, in the chapel, which desecrated the Christian altar, deprived all of our uh, airmen of a sacred worship space. Well, the chaplain sent that email up to his commander, who sent it over to the airman's commander, and uh, the airman got a letter of reprimand for simply expressing a religious opinion to a chaplain. So that's not right. I agree with you. People need to have freedom of speech, and, and religious liberty is one of the cornerstones of our great society. And of course, uh, we've got too many sheeple out there who don't seem to realize that. People need to become familiar with their history and the religious liberty it was founded on. Thanks so much for being with us, Gordon. Thank you, Kevin. God bless you in Jesus' name. You too. All right. Pray in Jesus name dot org. Pray in Jesus name dot org. I encourage you to check it out. You need to support our uh, people in ministry who are trying to support our troops and uh, stop this form of censorship that couldn't be uh, more un-American. All right. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you spend it sensibly right here on this station.